evening, Rumblers! Jen Richards here, co-founder of Rumbles Paleo and creator of our online healthy cooking school, the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub. I have something, one word to say to you. Actually, it's three words. And those three words are, I love you! No, uh, well, I do, but also those three words are hot cross buns! How exciting! All right, I would like you all, I can see a couple of people coming online now. Hello, Rhonda! How are you? I love you, and I love you, and you, and you, and everybody else coming online. Um, yes, we're talking hot cross buns. Who loves hot cross buns? Give me a yes in the comments if you used to like hot cross buns, or if you still like hot cross buns. When I think of Easter, those buns, those cheeky little buns, come to mind, definitely. And... Speaking of Easter, I'd love to know what's your favorite Easter memory? Um, I know as a kid, I was always so ex I was just as excited about Easter as I was about Christmas. Um, hello, Max. I can see Maxine is online. And Rhonda says, oops, oops, uh, me, especially your recipe. I said, Rhonda, you've been making the Rumbles Paleo recipe. That's awesome to hear. Um, as a kid, one of my fondest memories. Easter was being at my uncle and auntie's farm and we would go and collect all the grass cuttings and put them in baskets and put that out for the Easter bunny to put our eggs in. I don't know how because I really suffered badly from hay fever so I'm not sure if that was a really good idea um, on my mum's on my mum's and auntie's ideas. And I can see Mr. Dave Barker is um, joining in. He's a cheeky little little chop. <laughs> Hi Kerry, how are you today? Lovely to see you. And Dave actually, Dave is my boyfriend and he's, he is here tonight. He's actually sitting down there on the floor commenting because he's going to help me to do some cooking this evening. So I didn't realize he was, well that's him there. <laughs> he's going to help me. I needed a hand to uh, melt some chocolate. So he's going to come on in and help us to melt chocolate this evening. It's tough. Being my boyfriend, I give them tricky jobs to do, like milk chocolate, which is, you know, it's probably not such a bad idea. Anyway, moving right along. Yeah, tell me, what was your favorite Easter memory? What was your favorite Easter egg growing up? I always wanted the Humpty Dumpty eggs because for some reason I thought I'd get more chocolate because it had the secret beanies in there. I thought for some reason that that would give me more chocolate than anybody else because if, they, if I got a bunny, then I didn't have the beanies in there. And that means I would get less chocolate. So <laughs> that was my process of thinking as a child. Uh, Maxine, get the hat off, Dave. Ah, oh, yeah, he's been out in the sun. Um, not that it's sunny right now. And actually, I can tell that, it, you know, the summer is ending because it used to be bright light when we were filming this show not so, so long ago. But now it's really quite dark. I love the hard, hard, oh, really, Kerry? You like the hard-boiled colored ones? We were never brought up with those as a kid. And... Probably if I was given those as a child, I probably would have thrown them on the floor and went, no, where's the chocolate? But um, that's something I know that Dave's mum actually does with uh, his niece and nephew. They always boil the eggs and paint them. And we did do that at primary school, which I thought was lots of fun. Anyway, moving right along. Tonight's episode is actually brought to you by... Maxine, I still get the kids the Humpty Dumpty eggs. Yeah, there's something classic about them. And actually, speaking of chocolate... Tonight's episode is actually brought to you by the Rumbles Chocolate. We have an Easter sale, so just in case you don't want to buy your, buy your family and friends the general chocolate from the supermarket, Rumbles Chocolate is, of course, a good idea. 70% dark, made with only three natural ingredients, and it's a huge sale at the moment. You can buy four tubs, get one tub free. We've got our bulk bags on sale, our, one, our 500 gram bags. You can buy it by the half kilo. Uh, it's definitely on sale. So you can head to the Rumbles Paleo store to grab that and find some gifts for your family if you like. So I totally recommend it. And we're going to cook a little bit with that chocolate tonight. Of course, you can use a different chocolate if you want to, but um, it won't taste as good and it won't be as healthy as our chocolate. So um, let's talk about hot cross buns. These are hot uncrossed buns, and this is what we're going to be making tonight. Actually, I've got a better picture of them here for you. There they are. And write a little yes in the comments if you've made these before. Who's made our hot cross buns already? I'd love to know. I know Rhonda has. 
Um, so, you know, double thumbs up to you, Rhonda. I can't do double thumbs up. And um, we're actually going to put the crosses on these later tonight. I just baked these not so long ago. I have no idea. Oh, Dave and Max are having a nice little conversation there, which I've missed out on, which is fine. Now, does anybody know where hot cross buns actually came from? Um, uh, you know, we've been eating them for years, but why exactly around Easter time do we eat hot cross buns? And I have an interesting fact for you. Hot cross buns actually have nothing to do with the Christian religion. I always grew up thinking that the cross on the buns was to represent the crucifix um, that Jesus was, of course, crucified on all those years ago. But I was doing a bit of research today for the show and I wanted to know why exactly we eat hot cross buns. So I've got a little bit of trivia for you. Who likes to play Trivial Pursuit? Pop a yes in the comments there if you like to play Trivial Pursuit. Because this question could give you, I mean, if you listen to this information, you could get the winning piece of pie to put into your little mover. So listen up. Um, I was just telling Dave about this before, actually. I was like, I'm so fascinated by this story of the hot cross buns. And so he's going to hear it twice. Now... They were actually started in England many, many years ago. Um, but when and why is an actual mystery? I've got my notes here because it's actually quite a long, convoluted story. So listen up. Remember, this is going to win you Trivial Pursuit. Um, and the buns, they don't really know when or why they were made, but they were traditionally eaten around Easter time. And it was actually a tribute to a Saxon goddess by the name of Eustar which is spelled E-O-S-T-R-E. I cannot pronounce that word. Eel star, something like that. Anyway, and she was the goddess of light. And the goddess of light, of course, in April on the other side of the world, was to celebrate the return of the light after the equinox because, of course, they would have been through a really dark winter. And um, Easter, E-O-S-T-R-E, um, was probably derived from a German goddess of fertility. And her name was House, 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 H-O-U-S-O-S, -O -O or something like that. And actually, that German goddess was related to fertility and rabbits. So that's why we have Easter rabbits around Easter time, because this Greek goddess was linked to rabbits and eggs. So I always wondered, were you like me and always wondered where on earth why on earth would we have rabbits at Easter time? Because it's supposed to celebrate new life. And what do rabbits have to do with new life? Well, they're linked to this German goddess because she was linked to bunnies. And I'm sure I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this, so you can go and Google it yourself afterwards if you like. Hi, Kim. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Um, yes, and so the actual cross on the bun, um, not that ours have any at the moment, uh, is actually a, um, let me have a look, I've got it here, it's a Celtic symbol. And the equal lines that cross each other do not represent the crucifix, which is what I always thought. It actually represents the Celtic symbol, um, the intersection of heaven and earth. And that is how we got the cross on the buns. Now, the hot cross buns were actually banned from being eaten in the UK for quite some time because um, because the Saxons took over. Was it the Saxons? The Protestants took over. And they didn't um, want these Celtic traditions in their Catholic sort of based religion. So they banned them. And then good old Queen Elizabeth, God, got to love her, right? She came on in and said, no, everybody loves these hot cross buns. So we will let people eat them around Easter and Christmas. So they used to eat hot cross buns around Christmas. So there you go. Come Christmas time. Don't be surprised if Coles or Woolworths catch on to this story and they start marketing hot cross buns at Christmas because you all know that Santa Claus, Claus's suit is red because of Coca-Cola, right? That's a story for another time. Let's talk about that at, um, at Christmas time. So let's make some hot cross buns. Um, and I've got everything ready behind me. So I'm going to jump behind the bench here and get on with cooking. Now, have I missed out on anything, Maxine? I hope everybody, you know what I should do? Hmm, put these on. Um, can I tell you a story about my glasses? Uh, a whole heap of people sent me all these strings for my glasses, and um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I know who sent them to me. They were supposedly from Secret Admirers, but I'm sure Maxine and Rhonda had something to do with it. 
Anyway, I was supposed to put them on my glasses so I wouldn't lose them. And uh, silly me, it was really hot one day and I had the strings on and I took the strings off because they were just annoying me. And then I lost my glasses. So I went and bought another pair. And then about a couple of weeks after I bought the other pair, I found the old pair. So now I have two pairs and I have a lot of glasses strings which I should put on. Anyway, let's cook some hot cross buns. All right. All right, what do I need, what do I need? So to make our hot cross buns, there is no magic word. I'm gonna pull this down a bit. There is no magic word for tonight's episode because try as I might, when I tell you to type in a word so you get the recipe instantly emailed or sent to your Facebook um, messenger, often it doesn't work. And I'm really sorry about that, but I can't seem to figure that out. So I'm going to pin the recipe for the hot cross buns in this post after I finish cooking. And of course, I've already posted the recipe down below in our Facebook feed. So just go on down and make sure you find the recipe there or look afterwards. So our hot cross buns are paleo hot cross buns, of course, which means they're gluten, grain, and dairy free. Now, these hot cross buns, they taste pretty good, don't they, Dave? Yep. Yes. They taste, in my opinion, like the ones from the supermarket, but the texture is different. Now, I've said this many times before, when you bake paleo style using things like almond meal, and arrowroot and coconut flour, you will not get the doughiness or the sponginess, sponginess, is that a word? That you get in normal cooking because that's what gluten does. Gluten gives breads and pastries its doughiness. And the thing about wheat these days, specifically for baking, they modify a lot of wheat and put extra gluten into it just for bakers so that their breads can be doughier and fluffier and that sort of thing which is good for the cake or the bun, but it's not good for our or our bellies. So these hot crust buns will not have the same texture, but damn, they taste so good. They're just as spicy, they're just as comforting. They still taste like a hug from your nan, trust me, because um, my nan used to hug me a lot and they were the best hugs ever. So as always with paleo baking as well, it's really simple. It's so much easier than other baking. There's no creaming, there's no whipping, there's no beating. It's simply just mixing some really nutritious, nutritionally dense ingredients together. So we get a sweet treat that's got some essential fats and vitamins and nutrients from the beautiful ingredients that we're actually using. So you're going to get your dry ingredients here and the exact measurements are in the recipe as of course, but I think you've got about 160 grams of almond meal. Almond, almond meal is wonderful. It's got a lot of essential fats in there. It's got protein in there. And because it's got the essential fats, it's really filling. So eat one of these buns and you won't want another one because you actually feel full. If you eat the gluten filled buns from the supermarket, because there's no nutritionally dense ingredients in there, you, you're not giving the body any nutrition. And so it's just going to stay hungry because it's not getting what it needs to thrive. Uh, we've got about 200 grams of arrowroot. My favourite joke is arrowroot does not come from arrows. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> I think mean, I mean, no one else is laughing. Um, arrow... <laughs> <laughs> but arrowroot actually was used to help, I think it was in South America because they used those poisonous arrows. They were used the root of the arrowroot plant to heal your wounds from the poisonous arrows. Um, arrowroot, so it comes from a, a, a root, a shrub of some sort. Um, I've also got some wonderful spices in there. What you want in a hot cross bun is that, that spiciness, that warmth, that smell, and that comes from spices such as cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and ginger. Those are all in here and the exact measurements are on the recipe. I've got baking powder, I've got a bit of salt, and I've put some currants in mine. You can use sultanas, you can use currants, you can use any dried fruit you want. Use dried apricots, use dried pineapple. If you want to make a tropical hot cross bun, experiment. Get, get, get creative, see what you can come up with. So I've popped those in there. And I've got the wet ingredients over here. So just pop your wet ingredients into a separate bowl. Um, so I've got three eggs. I've got half a cup, you can use either olive oil 
or butter. Now, butter is traditionally not paleo, but a lot of paleo people eat it because it's very low in lactose. There's barely any lactose in there at all. So a lot of people, even if they're lactose intolerant, can actually consume butter. I'm not saying you can, um, but a lot of people can. You could use ghee as well. I wouldn't recommend using coconut oil. By all means, try it if you want um, and do that. And then we're going to add a little bit of sweetener. Now I want to show you my trick for measuring out honey. We're using about a quarter of a cup. You can use less if you want. You can use more if you want because we've got sweetness from the currants in there. So please, you can play around with that. I use about a quarter of a cup. Now what I always do when I'm working with honey is I just dose whatever I'm measuring it in with a little bit of oil. Because what I hate with honey is it just sticks everywhere. You have to get your fingers in there and it's just, it's just a pain in the, you know what. So then I pour my honey in there. And what that oil is going to do is make sure it just all comes out. I think I've shown you this before. See that? Empty. That's what the oil does. It just helps it to slide all out. Mix it all together. La, la, la. And then simply all we do is mix our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. See how easy is that? Pop it in there. And I hope you're all having fun conversing there. I cannot see your comments, but I'm pretty sure Maxine and Dave are taking care of you there. Uh, Maxine does, of course, work for Rumble's Paleo now. She's a wonderful addition to our team. Um, so she will take care of you there while I can't read the comments. All right, let me come and show you. I want to show you what's going on inside this bowl. There we are. The mixture is really quite thick, but we're forgetting one of the most important ingredients. Can you guess what it is? Um, go on, have a guess. No, it's not small children. We are not baking with small children tonight. Was that a good joke? Was that a good joke, Dave? No. Um, <laughs> I sometimes just work around in my kitchen and laugh at myself. I don't. I find my jokes funny, but most people don't. Then we're going to add about a hundred grams of Rumble's Choc Rocks. You, of course, do not have to use um, chocolate. You can leave this out, but I like adding it in, so I'm actually going to use this one because Dave's going to melt that chocolate for me and I'm going to show you how to put the delicious chocolate crosses on top of your buns. I bet you don't hear people saying that every day, putting chocolate crosses on your buns. You can go and say that to someone in the street and see what they say back to you. Um, all right, so you put it all in there. And you stir it all about. Then you're going to spoon it into some patty pans. Kimstone chocolate. Hi, Shay. We've got Shay online, everybody. Say hello to Shay. She's from Low Carb Real Food Advocates. Um, I haven't seen you in ages, Shay. Shay is a very big endorser of our cookies and chocolates. She eats a lot of them, don't you, Shay? Um, all right. So then what you're going to do is spoon that mixture what happened to the hokey pokey? You can all do the hokey pokey at home if you want. Please do. Now, a trick. Somebody wrote into our private group in the Rumbles Lifestyle Hub, which is the healthy cooking school we have, and they said to me, Jenny, how do we stop our muffins from sticking to the patty pans? And I, you know, I, of course, went to the Encyclopedia Britannica to find an answer, otherwise known as Google, and I found the answer. What you do is you just brush your patty pans with a bit of olive oil or any type of oil and also in your oven pop a tray of water in the bottom there so that or the oven has moisture in there when you bake and that helps the patty pans to stop sticking. And I tell you what, it works a treat. Look at this. See how you've got barely anything on the patty pans? So that's your trick if you want to keep your um, cakes looking good when you pull them out of the patty pan. Um, so then you're just going to spoon, Dave, I'm going to need your help in a minute. You're just going to spoon your mixture into your patty pans. So let's do one. Oh. 
and I'm going to show you about how full. So you want it about three quarters full there, um, and then that's going to rise nicely so that you get it so that the patty pan's full and so it's not spilling over. All right, let's melt chocolate. There's a, let me see, what's going on here? The Mackenzie brand of baking. Just checking your comments, people saying hello to Shay. And um, I can see through the screen that a lot of you are doing the hokey pokey. The, my, I have a magic computer screen which allows me to see in your houses. So I can see, Maxine, what are you doing there? We, anyway, no, I'm trying to make a joke, but it's not working. So we're going to make our crosses out of chocolate. Now we're going to melt the chocolate. I always use the melt microwave to melt because it's just quicker and it's easier, but you need to be careful because you can burn the chocolate. Actually, Dave, maybe I don't need you. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to melt this for about 40 seconds. Actually, I'm just going to get Dave to do it because I want to. No. So you're going to melt it for about 40 seconds. Um, now, you don't want to melt it for too long because if you go for too long, you can burn the chocolate really easily. Well, he doesn't know how to use the microwave. Really should practice. He doesn't know how to use microwave. Um, 40 seconds. Um, don't go any longer than that. And about 100 grams of chocolate is going to help us to put the crosses on our buns. Now, stay around because I want to show you how to make a really easy piping bag to pipe on the chocolate. Um, oh, and Rhonda uses silicon patty cases. Do the silicon help? Does the silicon help it not to stick, Rhonda? I guess it does, doesn't it? Because you just pop them out. If you want to use silicon bases, then that's a really good idea too. Good one, Rhonda. I don't have any of those. I've only, I'm old school. I've only got the, the metal ones here. Um, so if you want to melt your chocolate using a double double boiler, please feel free to. Um, and sometimes it'll look like it hasn't even melted a bit. But trust me, you think the chocolate's not melted, and then all of a sudden it's burnt. It's like avocados. They're not right, not right, not right, too right. And this is the same with chocolate. It's like not melted, not melted, not melted, burnt. So you've got to be careful. So we'll put that in for another 30 seconds. And then just go in spit spurts. Don't go any longer than 20 or 30 seconds, specifically with this small amount of chocolate. And while Dave's doing that, can you pass me that glass? I'm going to show you how to make a piping bag and how to pipe this chocolate on easily. So what I've got here, double boiling is full, yeah, double boil, using a double boiler is foolproof. You won't burn the chocolate. And that means you put some water in a fry pan and then you put the chocolate in a glass bowl on top and stir. And the heat from the water, the simmering water, will melt the chocolate. All right, so pop your bag in there in a tall glass like this. So I've got just like a sandwich bag. And do you want to get a metal spoon and so I can see, you can't see that there, I can see this is starting to melt. So I'm going to get Dave to stir that with a metal spoon. Yep. <laughs> and so can you see how it's kind of melted? So we're going to do that for another 20 or 30 seconds and see what happens there. Make extra for testing. Good idea, Shay. That's, That's very noisy. Sorry. <laughs> I have a funny thing with my ears. It's um, my ears are really sensitive to noises, and so when those banging things happen, it's like there's some sort of um, I don't know marching band going off in my head. I get really sensitive. Um, so pop that in there, and when the chocolate's melted, we're going to pour it in here, and this is going to double as our piping bag. Um, so that should be melted now in a minute. Has anyone done this? This method before using the piping bag, I'd love to know. Beautiful, actually. So, you're welcome. You're, well, thank you, Dave. <laughs> so you can see that's almost melted now. And you, I'm going to put it in for another 20 seconds. And then you want to take it out before those buds all melt. Sorry to put my back to you. Anyway, all right, so 20 more seconds and then we'll get piping. So I'm going to pull this down so we can come over to our bench. And my puppy dogs, can you pick one better to show them? I'm going to show you my dog, please. 
Come and see my puppy dog. She's really old. Her name's Wombat. Say hello, Wombat. Say hello. He's pull her up. Hello. Here she is. She all right? Pop it down. She's really old. <laughs> She's like 15 years old. She's old. Man, what's that in dog years? She's pretty old, right? All right, we're done. Come on, Wombat. So this is all melted now, and we will pour it into our piping bag. Who else has got a dog out there? Can you type in the name of your dog in the comments there? I'd like to know what the name of your dogs are. I, I've always had a dog. Growing up, we've had about four dogs in my lifetime, and I cannot imagine life without a pet. I seriously can't. I think it's one of the most healthy things for people to have a pet because they just love you back unconditionally. There's nothing you can't do. Well, there probably is something you can do to make it a pet not love you. They're just, oh, I just love them. What are people saying about the dog? Wombat is so cute. Aw, oh, Wombat is so cute. Now, the reason we called her Wombat was because when we got her as a puppy, she was really dark, and she actually looks like a Wombat. I said, wow, that dog looks like a Wombat. And um, that's why we named her, named her Wombat. I actually originally wanted to call her Womble. Remember the Wombles? Who remembers the Wombles? And, um, but then I changed it to Wombat. All right, so then we've got the chocolate in our bag. And what I'm going to do is show you how to pipe it on here. So, you just grab some scissors and what you're going to do is just twist this around like that and turn it up because you don't want the chocolate to leak out when you snip the end off. And then you just snip the end off like so and you pipe away. Now just Excuse me, I'm just going to do the piping and I'll show you what I do with the leftover because Shay, I do always do too much but I don't eat it all. So we're just going to pipe the crosses on, which remember is a Celtic symbol. And just go like so. Oh. Yeah. I'm, not do I'm not doing it too well because I'm in a rush. But if I was doing it, um without you guys watching, I'd probably do it a lot slower, but I'm conscious that this may be a bit boring for you, so I'm trying to go quickly. But they're looking pretty good, don't you think, Dave? Marvellous. Ma Dave thinks they look marvellous. And there we go. Let me show you. See? Let me show them that. You can put your face on camera. Dave <laughs> Dave is like that, that dentist dad. Remember, we can't show you his face on telly. I've got one more to do. Do you remember, who remembers that ad? It really is like that with the height of your camera. It is, yeah. Um, this one didn't turn out so good. Got a big blob on it. And what I actually like to do with the leftover chocolate Eat it. is I get my coconut yogurt. Nudie is my favourite brand just because that's what they sell at the supermarket, really. Um, thank you, Dave. And I squeeze it into there. And then what I do is I, st thank you. And then I stir it, I let it kind of set for a little bit. I let the coldness of the uh, coconut, let it set for a bit, a bit like ice magic. And then I stir it around and it goes like chop chip coconut yogurt. Although it hasn't this time because I've had the coconut yogurt out sitting on my bench for a little while. Ooh, and there we go. See? It's so yum. It's so yum. Um, all right. Clever girl, Jen. I'm not sure what that's in regards to, but thank you, Rhonda. I'll take any compliment I can get. So that is our episode this evening on hot cross buns. I'm sorry if it's been a little bit everywhere. Was it a little bit everywhere? It was all right. It was all right. And um, I hope you're all going to make them. I know some of you have made them before, but this is my challenge to you. This week, over the weekend, get the kids, get a stranger off the street, get your pets, 
and bring them into the kitchen and make paleo chop chip hot cross buns. There is nothing better to do on a weekend, is there? <laughs> there isn't. That is your challenge. Do you accept? Give me a big, oh yeah, if you accept the challenge. Oh, Rhonda's going to make hers tomorrow. Beautiful. And remember, I will post the link to the recipe above. It is in comment in other posts down below. Don't forget you can head to the Rumbles Paleo website and grab all your Easter gifts or grab the Easter chocolate just for yourself. This is really funny. I'm like, I could do this. Hello. Like, hello. <laughs> okay. That's enough from me. I'm feeling a little bit hot. Um, I'm coming camping. Are you going camping for Easter, Kim? Beautiful. And Jenny Isaac. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Good oh, good name, Jenny. <laughs> All righty, everybody. Shay says thanks, Jen and Dave. Denise says her favorites are Chop Rocks. It's been a wonderful evening. I've got to better go bake these hot cross buns. And um, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your cooking challenge. And I will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Good night,